it's, it's always good to speak to a fellow Singaporean and uh, I saw some old friends as well. So, well, I'm Andy. So at, at the back, you can see what, um, what I was doing and what I'm doing now. I will just uh, quickly go through, you know. So usually in a very complex uh, situation, especially in Singapore, when you meet people, I'll just say that I'm a book author. You know, if not, they'll ask me, oh, what are you doing, you know. It's, it's, it's actually a bit confusing. It doesn't, um, um, NFT, blockchain and so forth is, is very confusing. So right now, my latest book is about NFT. I wrote the book last year, published it in uh, August last year. So far, um, I have sold more than 10,000 books. Um, title is NFT from zero to hero. Why, why did I come out with that, that, that catchy title? Is because I'm actually fairly guilty, you know, some of my friends in Singapore, they always like give me a call, some of them run run groups and so forth, they say, hey, I need to do NFT, can you help me? Uh, ne 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 by default, I really don't have that much time, you know, and then they hire some kind of uh, uh, expert, and then they spend, one of them spend about 300,000, another one spend about 500,000, but then, you know, if, if, if I were to publish the book earlier, he would have gotten some insights from the book and maybe not pay that much money to the ex to the so-called expert. So the book is useful. You can see it on uh, Amazon or there are some uh, sort of uh, free version if you search hard enough. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, no, I can't do that. No, I have, I have a publisher to answer to you know, So I just want to be frank. So I'm also a licensed fund manager, you know, um, or a CMS uh, license. Um, I also give advice to multiple countries. So before this, I was uh, giving advice to uh, uh, the productivity organization. You know, it's part of uh, part of like a UN-like organization. So so from there, I got a lot of good contacts, you know. And then now I'm still giving advice to Mongolia. Um, current advisor to Bybit in terms of uh, government relations partnerships, you know, so if you see Bybit's logo on uh, on Red Bull, that, that is actually done by my team, alright? Uh, I'm an export member to Hyundai, or Hyundai, you know, the car brand, um, ex-chair to a big one, it's, uh, used to be one of the Chinese uh, biggest exchange, right now they are still called, they changed their name to big one, that sounds weird, but it's fine, and then very active in esports, um, also hold a PhD in uh, productivity science. So this is who I am. Uh, quite, quite, quite searchable. Try not to do bad things because I also, uh, you know, I want to be the nice Singaporean, you know. So I think I will just start off with some ter terminologies. You know, I was told that uh, it's good to, you know, give some context to what I'm trying to say. So, so what is a blockchain? You know, typically if you look at what I've written, you know, I talk about immutable ledger record transaction, basically it is a blockchain and it is just a database, you know. So, so let, let's, not, let's not be fooled by, by many different people who tell you, oh, oh it's so hard to do, it's uh, very complex, it's actually just a database. Then some people will say, what is a DLT, you know, distributed leisure technology, you know, what, what, what does it do? It's also another form of database. You know, so so to, again, you know, just keep things very simple as as you move along. And then, if you read the newspaper, sometimes you will say, "Oh, what what is a CBDC? CBDC is a central bank digital currency. It's a form of a digital currency issued by the central bank. It has uh, literally um, nothing to do with cryptocurrency, and uh, sometimes they don't even use the blockchain technology. So again, this just just for context, yeah." And then now, now the word, you know, we all start to really look at what, what is Web3. So Web3 to me is actually a, maybe a more decentralized version of the current internet that we see. There's a lot of terms that we use like decentralization, blockchain, you know, token-based economy. So these are some of the, the terms that you always hear, you know. But, but is, is Web3 really decentralized? That's something that I will tell you at the end of the the conversation that we have. Then again, you know what is DAO? So DAO is a decentralized organization, you know. Supposedly there is no central authority. It can run on its own. 
based on a common consensus mechanism. NFT, you know, our, our, our good friend um, gave a talk uh, some, some time back. The NFT is non fungible token, exists on the blockchain, and cannot be replicated. Of course, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, things that we can, we can really talk about. I want to just share some stats, you know. So if you, if you look at if you look at the current situation, you know, macro and economic environment, geopolitically, you look at there's a lot of uh, things that are not so stable, you know, venture capital investment has slowed down. Venture activities are still as uh, busy, you know, in the blockchain startup space, you know, a lot of uh, Web3 investments, a lot of um, crypto token-like investment, and also in certain countries, for example, in Kazakhstan, you will see an influx of um, crypto projects. They are looking at security. They are looking at STO. So coming back to my point is uh, crypto fundraising reached about 24.9 B in the first nine months of uh, 2022. You know, compared to uh, 2021, I mean, it's still okay, very decent size. Crypto sector recorded mega fund rounds of 100 mil or more. There are, there are, really, there are really plenty of them that I, I can really share. You know, of course, in, in, the, in the audience then, they, were, they would have heard some of them do not have any value. You know, how can they become a 100 mil company? How, why, what makes them raise 100 mil? Well, again, that's also something that you can ask later on. You know, I'm happy to answer some of these questions. So, so some of these uh, top companies that I, I really want to share, you know, you would have uh, seen them um, in Singapore. Some of them, like Ripper, um, is more like a money transfer uh, network. They are fairly active in the financial industry. Founded in 2012, um, their Lex counterpart, their yeah, ledger counterpart. Some of them are also based in Singapore. So total amount raised is uh, 293 million. Valuation right now is 15 billion. Of course, uh, you know it will go up and uh, up and down. Really depends on the whole situation. So they are one of the older uh, coin. As you also know, XRP, their native coin, is uh, a top ten coin, and they are also actively seen on the newspaper because of uh, some issues with uh, US SEC. Another company, you know, um, valuation 14B, uh, blockchain.com. They have about, I think right now, about 300 over uh, staff, you know, the, that I know of. But of course, uh, based on my, uh, my, my, my research, it's uh, slightly more. Um, this uh, wallet itself has about 37 million verified users across 200 countries. No, I well, I don't know how to verify that, but but that's how the statistics are. And this these are actually two of the unicorn that we see, you know, very commonly see on the paper. Then if you are into NFT, you know, then you will think of oh NFT, where is the most popular uh, marketplace? So OpenSea is the most popular. Founded in two zero one seven, valuation thirty point three billion. Um, they have. Uh, over 10 trillion of uh, uh, transactions. They have um, a very sizable um, trading volume, you know, throughout um, last year when the market was bad. You know, they have new and innovative product listed on the marketplace almost on a daily basis. Chain analysis. Um, go down the line, you will see that the valuation gets a little bit smaller. But it's still at 8.6 8 billion uh, valuation. Um, they, they, do, they do a lot of uh, different kind of uh, analysis, research reports, and so forth. Fireblock, uh, very active in Singapore as well, 8 billion, you know, enterprise grade custody platform. Over 1,500 organizations deployed on their platform uh, based on the statistic I've gotten last year. Currently, 15% of the daily volume are through their infrastructure. 
So this is one of the big, big boys that uh, you see. Um, they are also based in Singapore. Starkware, you know, Starkware is uh, more, slightly more tacky. They have about 8B, founded in 2018. Um, they, have a, they have actually settled about 247 million transactions on, on the Ethereum network uh, to date, and uh, they will keep accumulating. Because they, 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 are, uh, they, are, they are technology to help to keep things more decentralized, you know, more, more viable, it's all on, uh, on that network. Yoga Labs, you know, Yoga Labs is um, is a four billion dollar valuation company. Um, they have very famous NFTs. You know, you can see Bot Eight Yacht Club, Cyber Punks that you will see. These are all from them, right? They have a very nice uh, market um, market cap eight point one B, uh, and they are still building. You know, new projects come out from them. Uh, I think two months ago, and they will still continue to launch. So some of the top 100 NFT collections are all done by this lab. So what are the latest trends in uh, Web3? You know, we have seen a lot of things on the paper. We talk about different technology, different companies popping up. But for me, you know, I, I spotted a few. I just really want to share and see what's your response. You know, if you don't agree, if you have questions, of course, later on you can ask. So I think NFT moving beyond just pictures. I think this is something that, that is really happening. You know, one year ago, everybody is just talking about some really simple looking GIF picture, and then they are selling hot cakes and so forth, right? You know, I see gentlemen smiling as well, but it is true, it is so crazy, right? But as of now, you know, Things have things have changed a lot more. You know, big brands are coming in. Um, bigger brands are looking at NFT as a form of collectible, right? And we are trying our very best, you know, to find new utility in the NFT market. So moving beyond pictures is actually the very first step, and that's also one of the very first step. You know, why big companies are getting into NFTs. For example, Starbucks. You know, they move into NFT. Taco Bell move into NFT. Red Bull move into NFT. These are also some of the things that I will highlight later on. So, watch trading. NFT has many uh, many of these uh, watch trading scams, phishing topics that is uh, tagged to them. You know, as, as technology move on, you will see that maybe watch trading will be very much reduced. Um, I hope. It should be very much reduced because if you if you look at one of these uh, article that I have done last year, I think in uh, maybe in October. So looks rare and uh, X two Y two are the two one of the two top NFT marketplaces. You know, maybe you have not heard of it. Most of you have heard of uh, OpenSea, but they have more than ninety four point seven one percent of their volume all washed you know so there's only a tiny bit of volume that is real you know why why, I, why would we say that it's washed is because many of these nft uh, creator you know they create they create their own volume they create their own buy and sell you know they are all there to get more buy and sell just because they want to get more incentive from them you know whereas you as you buy and sell you might get more tokens you might get more more benefit from it. So that's the reason why they encourage, sort of encourage them to do that kind of watch trading, you know, throughout. So for those who want to find out a bit more, you can look at this article, just search my name. You can find how I look at watch trading. You know, I have very good statistics to back each and every transaction that I've quoted, because uh, to be again very honest, uh, being in the Singapore system, I try to be as factual as I can. So case study, you know, uh, Starbucks with their rewards program. They are one of the first company to integrate NFT with, with, with their existing um, rewards program. You know, so Starbucks is, is, a, is a very big brand. Then Porsche, you know, uh, this happened pretty recently. 
So they launched a 7,500 piece of NFT collection. Um, different artwork on the on the NFT, you know, different artist impression on the car. It's, it's, a, it's a collectible item within the Porsche uh, community. Then there's a uh, Red Bull, you know. So Red Bull, um, by bit, you know, uh, being the advisor there and also looking after the Red Bull uh, partnership right now, you know, we we have a partnership agreement with uh, Red Bull for three years. You know, every year we are giving them fifty million dollars worth of uh, sponsorship. You know, and and we are also very proud to say that you know we we co-created the first uh, blue chip NFT on the Formula One car, and with with the championship team. You know, not with any team, right? So Red Bull, traditional brand, they are willing to step up because they also see that. Web3 has a certain potential, you know, not so much about money, to be very honest. You know, if you look at what Starbucks is doing, they are not doing this just for money, right? They are not selling their NFT, you know. Same for Red Bull, they are not selling their NFT last year, you know, but they want to get more people to follow them. They are more hype, more hit, more happening, you know. They just want to do that. And of course, this also will be correlated and you can see maybe good effects on their stock market. I'm not sure, you know, but definitely what we see last year is not a money grab game. You know, they don't just sell the NFT because they just want to sell it. You know, they want their users to get used to new technologies, get used to the Web3 environment, get used to how to, they look at the new mechanism, you know, to, to, to brighten up all their users' day, you know. Then, then you look at uh, very uh, another very iconic brand like uh, Tiffany. So they come out with um, their pendant, you know, together with uh, CryptoPunk. I'm not going to look at how much the price is, but it has been a, a very, very, very uh, quickly sold out NFT, you know. The other trend that you would you might see you know in the currency you know, I, I seldom you know mingle too much in Singapore and you know, most of the time I'm overseas but whenever I back well, when I'm back you know I see I see very enthusiastic uh, projects and you know, one of one of which is uh, in the music scene you know I have an old friend um, you know they are doing NFTs for like Hong Kong artists you know they are doing NFTs for Indonesia uh, artists you know some of them have really good following, you know. So, so I think music scene is going to change. You know, the music scene can can add NFT to it to change their experience. You know, it may no long. It, it might also be very simple things like they change the ticket that they are selling, the physical ticket into NFT. It becomes something that you can sell. You know, basically, if you talk about NFT, anything can be NFT. You know, so music, interestingly, everything can be. It can also stay in the metaverse as well, right? So, so this is one one trend that you see. Another trend that is more dear to our heart is uh, NFT can also be in the healthcare uh, sector. You know, right right now, if you if you look at NFT record, um, or maybe healthcare record per se, you know, different doctors will keep a different set of your records. You know, you, you can't just pass them around. You know, first opinion, second opinion. Sometimes they ask you to do a blood test again. And, and sometimes you need to go back to your old data. Actually, NFT can solve part of that problem. You know, they give the power back to the user. You know, they give the power back to you. You know, you have the record. You can go to Doctor A, Doctor B, ask for a second opinion, third opinion. And then if you if you are traveling overseas, for example, you, you are going US, maybe the Mayo Clinic, for example, you cannot. You don't need to lug one big bag. Everything can be on chain. You know, on chain verified. So th this is also a, a very good business that you can look into. You know, healthcare records, you can do that. You know, if this is there, then our PMs, uh, maybe health record will not be leaked, you know. Uh, but I'm sorry, PM, you know, I love you. But, uh, <laughs> but, but we, we need the technology, you know. Then, then as, you, as you move along, you know, as you move along, you will see many different things in the, in the crypto, in crypto space. They will tell you ZK, you know. How many of you know what is ZK? Okay, great. I only see one hand, which is good. Which means this is still something very new. 
zero proof, zero knowledge proof technology. So if you read, you know, uh, allow one party to prove they have certain data without reviewing any information about it. Greater privacy, greater security. Sounds, sounds too good to be true, right? But there, there, are, there are a lot of use cases that we can look at using the ZK technology. There's a lot of on-chain, off-chain execution that can be done beautifully with the ZK technology. And if you look at this, you know, news article that I mentioned about voting system, I think this will work very well in a in a in a vote, in a, in a voting uh, 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 system. You know, if if you if you have zero zero base zero knowledge base kind of uh, tech, you know, greater security. You don't know who is really voting, you know, but also ensuring that only that one person can vote once. I think this would be something very interesting. So ZK comes in the right time to bridge between Web 2 and Web 3 with, with greater privacy and using the blockchain technology. So this is something very practical that, that, that uh, some of my friends in US are talking about. Some of my friends in, in Thailand, they want to implement it. So, so this, these are things that are really happening in the space. Um, decentralized metaverse to the next level, you know. So, so you'll see more AR, VR kind of uh, um, integration, you know, together with uh, NFT as a as a as a token or as a as a key for you to access to metaverse, you know, give you another life, you know, at night, work work in the metaverse, experience the the connected reality, you know, this this is something very very cool, you know, big companies like Apple are are really putting a lot of effort in, into into the space. So you'll see 3D shopping, you know, within the metaverse, decentralized metaverse, maybe operated by 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 uh, fellow users. You will see um, places where people can interact. You know, you can see big brands within the metaverse. Again, what I'm saying right now is already happening. You know, there are more online, you know, operated by Nike, for example. It's all in the metaverse. You know, they are cre creating new economy. You know, not just what you see offline, not what you see in the e-commerce space, but also in the metaverse. So case study about, about metaverse. So Taco Bell, I, I like it. You know, that's the reason why I'm so 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 not fit looking. But 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 the, the problem with 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 all this uh, metaverse is is actually very international. You know, so they held a metaverse wedding. Sounds sounds weird, but they have a lot of couple signing up. Maybe it's a good good way to to save some uh, F&B costs. You know, I'm not sure, but but Taco Bell really did it. You know, they are one of the first few who did it. Then, as we move along, you know, we we, we, we talk to people in different countries. You know, just another case study about about decentralized identity. You know, I I went I speak to someone from Philippines. You know, they are actually looking at building a decentralized identity identification network for their own people. You know, some, some, again, sounds very crazy, right? But you just look at it, putting your own, your own, own passport and your own ID card on chain, recognized as a form of ID, you know? So this is also something that is really coming. Uh, no need in coming years, I know is there are already people doing pilot trial, Philippines, one one of the pro, uh, one of the states, they are doing it. So there's a lot of things that are changing, you know. And and with the and with all these things, you know, the other trend would be decentralized governance, you know. And and when we talk about governance, you know, we always look at how the DAO is going to work, you know, how how an organization is able to stay decentralized with proper governance, with proper consensus mechanism. These are some of the things that are also happening. You know, I, I have friends in uh, one of our Asia country again. I can't mention who, which country. They, they like. They have a lot of street protests. You know, legalized street protests. You know, they ask me, "Hey, uh, bro, can we do? Uh, can we work work this into a DAO? You know, although you know, so that they can operate very cohesively and sort of agree among all their protester friends. 
you know, and, and, and that's something really, really possible, right? You become very organized, you know, not like now you do it in some email and then it's not very safe. Some of them say that, well, I never, I never read your email, you know. So this can be done, real life situation. So Singapore Enterprises maturing in riding the Web3 bandwagon, you know. How many of you are into Web3? Can I have a raise of hands, show of hands? Okay, I see. That is good. That is good. That is good. Because the camera is only showing me, so so I think good Singapore is uh, doing well. Um, so so Singapore is a very innovative country, hundred percent, very innovative. We have good friends. We have uh, we have many other friends from uh, all over the world doing their business in Singapore. You know, we have created very good talent, good financial system. So Project Wubin, you know, MAS partner with a number of uh, financial institution, um, partner with a consensus, partner with JP Morgan. Some of you would have uh, know about this. This is one of the Singapore projects that we we know of. You know, they create a daily interbank settlement. Sounds very innovative, and to be honest, this is a very feasible uh, way to to do the settlement because. You know, a lot of these uh, back-end uh, uh, banking stuff, you know, they will not be here 24-7. With the blockchain technology, they can do clearance anytime, 24-7, you know. Swift can be really very swift, you know, 24-7. Then the, the other thing is about open search. This is also a Singapore-based um, um, open source project. Uh, basically, you put your search on the blockchain, right? So some people tell you oh, I'm from uh, MIT, uh, MIT, yeah, maybe 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 Taiwan or something, or Thailand. But <laughs> but as long as the 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 the, the cert is on chain, you can actually check it, right? Of course, they would have some other portal for you to check in the school, but sometimes you know if it's on chain, this the only one that you have, is a lot more credible, you know. So open cert, you can talk to them. There are a few other companies, schools. I think Nian. Uh, uh, skills Future, they are all very much in a collaborative mode. They formed this for the greater good. You know, it's a very good tool for HR practitioner. If uh, any one of you, you know, encounter this uh, open cert thing, but it's not very popular. I just, uh, I just want to say this to DBS Bank. You know, DBS Bank they have their uh, digital asset um, tokenization uh, companies. I don't want to mention too much about DBS because I think you all, meant, you all know DBS a, a lot, you know. But but also I want to want to say that they are also one of the more innovative uh, bank willing to put forward, uh, put their name forward, try some innovative things, you know, be the for, forefront bank, you know, when they deal with uh, technology. So I think DBS did a good job, you know. So where are the web, web three opportunities in Singapore and Southeast Asia? You know. Okay. Let me ask. Um, have uh, any anyone travel to Southeast Asia recently? Any countries? Malaysia? Anyone? Oh, okay. Many hands. Uh, okay. You know. Th uh, Thailand, Philippines. Okay. Some hands. Okay. What I'm trying to say is uh, there are opportunities and you will see them in, in Southeast Asia a lot more than maybe in Singapore. You know, just again, some nice statistic. You know, thinking now about revolution of internet, do you believe Web3 will replace Web2? Uh, if you look at the chart, you know, 47% um, of them say it has already happen. There are 4% say they don't know. Why is it so? You know, there are more people thinking that it's going to take over. Of course, you know, these are all data that's being facilitated. You know, these are data that, 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 that people want to share to tell people the Web3 is there. But to be very honest, very, very honest, you know, when I look at the, 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 the Southeast Asia uh, economy, for example, some of them are doing very well. You know, they are, they are trying to adapt. You know, like uh, Indonesia, they are changing right now. You know, they are very pro uh, 
uh, Web3, you know, they, they, they look at opportunities in a very different way, you know. They look at it, for example, you know, now a lot of this new generation, uh, 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 really, you know, like very, very young uh, friends of ours, you know, they, they just, they just find that working in the Web3 environment, you know, gives them more time, you know. And, and the kind of work that, that we are looking at for, for Web3, for example, you know, give them more flexibility. You know, so there's a new form of job that is, that is, that is being created, you know. Gay economy is something that, that, that we, we know, you know. Very, very good buzzword for the last five, six years. Uh, it's very popular, uh, but actually it's also a very more demanding job scope. You know, because agencies or companies really want them to engage and engage. And of course, since there's also an opportunity for you to be working at home, you know, you would be working 24-7, you know. But, but, that's, but, but to a lot of Gen, Gen, Gen Zs, they find that this is a good way for them to have different work-life balance. You know, like, like for myself, of course, I prefer a 9-to-5 job, right? And then that's it. But then to the newer generation, they don't see it this way. And, and this kind of uh, expectation in new job, and, and, and I would say new opportunities, are, are really changing their mind. Because now, people in Philippines, for example, they spend a lot of time on Telegram. Who of, anyone on Telegram? Oh, this time, good, 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 good. Almost a very good response. So, so in Telegram groups, you will see a lot of moderators. They'll come and talk to you, of course, they will send you some spam messages as well, but, 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 but most of the time, if you stay in legitimate groups that are all verified, you know, there are moderators there talking to you. You know, all these people are not robots, they are paid, all right? Each of these uh, channel, maybe they have about 10 to 20 active moderators. Each one of them are given a salary of about 200 US dollars a month. To us, maybe you say, oh, how can we survive? But to them, it's very different because they have time, you know, and 200 US dollars a month is, is also a very big thing, you know. So the, the maybe something out of the uh, um, Philippines, for example, in Kenya, you know, the, the Kenya Innovation Center CEO came, you know, we had good chats and so forth. You know, they, they also, they're also telling me, you know, a lot of the people are actually doing jobs within a DAO, econ DAO community. They are also doing their job, you know, as a moderator on Telegram. You know, this become a new career path. You know, some of them are, are very young. Some of them are, 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 are mummies. They care of their children while, while, while chatting online. They get they get good money. You know, two hundred is actually minimum. But some of the projects, Web three projects, they pay moderators a thousand to five thousand dollars just to be their main moderator. You know, main guy five grand, people below two hundred US dollar a month. You know, so so these these are changing. Then I think opportunities come when there's also a very uh, uh, a change in the environment in terms of the uh, uh, supply chain. You know, you will see more agile uh, supply chain in response to the um, growth in the e-commerce space. You will, you will also see opportunities like this that's happening because more and more companies right now who look at using the blockchain technology as not, not just a token, yeah? they use it as a tracking tool. There are now companies using that technology and they are not really publicizing it because it becomes a very standard thing. You know, when they go to the vendor, the vendor sell them this system. You know, and and when they when they sell this them this system, you know, everything is on chain. Some of, some of these things are really trackable. That helps to reduce a lot of fraud, a lot of uh, fake fake data, fake goods, and so forth. Everything is trackable. There are companies who are really using that. You know, supply chain wise, and and of course they, they because they are very traditional supply chain companies. They do not really publicize it because they don't see that as, as a form of a marketing tool. They find that it's not something that is more suited for their business, and they find that it's more efficient. You know, in terms of checking, you know, they do not 
they don't want me to depend on all the old legacy paperwork. So, so again, uh, when I when I look at this, uh, you know, as uh, SME enterprises and so forth, you know, make up more than ninety percent, and 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 if they are willing to change what they are thinking right now, you know, if they are willing to participate in this uh, supply chain network, if they are able to, you know, to able to change and adapt to Web three technology, there are actually many new things that they can get themselves into, you know. And then uh, Southeast Asia has become one of the key, maybe one of the top two places, you know, where you see many gamers are actually in Southeast Asia, you know. Game five, some of the biggest game five projects started in Southeast Asia. You know, you will see people, you know, playing games, play a game and you earn some money. Again, that money could be slightly lesser, maybe about sixty dollar sixty dollars, sixty US dollars a month, you know, starting from there, all the way to a few thousand dollars. You know, depending on when you go into the game. So you see some kids, you know, again, maybe in Vietnam, Vietnam is very active. You see them playing game and all those things. Don't 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 score them, you know, because they are earning money, you know, earning a form of money. But it's a very, it's a, it's, it's they enjoy and they get money, you know. They play game, they get money, you know. So 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 is 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 quite healthy in some ways, you know. You get new esports player, you know. You train their skills. It's a very different mindset, you know, as 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 we move towards that that direction. So actually, you meet Infinity. Um, so it's a game, one of the earlier games. They have the, they have more than eight point three million players. Eight point three is a big number, and their most active is actually in Philippines, and and they are very active in other Southeast Asia countries because it's, the cost of getting a user is a lot lower. If you compare it to Singapore. You know, it's, it's going to be very expensive you know, in Singapore. So, Southeast Asia has become one of the biggest hub for blockchain games. We need to know our USP. So, Vietnam is a source of a hardcore engineer. Very good foundation from the Web2 era. Philippines loves entertainment, man. So, you know, we have people coming here to have a sing and earn project sing song and then earn token oh man i, I don't know how this is going to work but they, they love it you know they love it thailand has a very vibrant financial market still quite vibrant very established of course singapore is still the king right but singapore but thailand has a very good financial uh, uh, ecosystem and in fact if you really look at the paper thai banks are also one of the few banks perhaps even earlier than dbs who actually get a couple of banks together to do uh, clearance using blockchain. Singapore, likely to produce more SaaS product, you know, given the international pool of talent. But, but Singapore, I still think that we are the finance, I think the financier, you know. If you go, if you go, to, a, uh, go to any form of meeting, I just came back from a family office meeting, and then they hosted a dinner. Then I realized that, okay, these are all big family office, big Singapore names. Then I realized that when I talk to them a lot more, they say, oh, I also know about uh, uh, Web3. You know, I also know about Web3. I want to invest in Web3. But, but they don't have the knowledge to do that. I, I hope, you know, everyone can spend a bit of time to look at how cryptocurrency is, is, is useful. You know, how, how, how you can trial or maybe even buy a little bit of this uh, token that perhaps you have never heard of, you know. It, it seems like I'm encouraging you to gamble. You know? <laughs> but I, I noted also I have a friend here uh, from Singapore Post, so I think it's okay, right? <laughs> so so, so the, the, the reason why I mentioned this, again, is that in, in Singapore, you know, you have heard a lot of scams, you know, oh, this uh, group, the target uncle, auntie, they, they get uh, 5 million, 10 million from them and then they run away. But then, if, if you know the market very well, you know, in the Singapore context, because many of us are very, very okay with financial products. 
you know, can you lose a thousand dollars? Maybe, uh, maybe a bit the heart pain, right? But you can try with a hundred dollars. You know, just try. You know, then maybe some of you will come and come and ask me later. Oh, hundred dollar buy Bitcoin? Not enough. You know, you cannot buy one Bitcoin. Uh, it's okay. You can buy zero point something. You know, zero point zero something Bitcoin. That's also fine. You know, but also the other thing that I have to think let you know is that in the cryptocurrency world, it's not just about Bitcoin. There are many, many coins that you have not heard of. Some of them are at 0 0.0001 cent. My calculator also cannot take it. You know, but if you have a hundred dollars, you are you have a good number of it, right? Again, this is like 4D, right? Support, support. Yeah. So this is very much like 4D, right? So 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 there there are there is a chance. You know, for, for that so-called investment product to go up. Again, these are non-financial products, just sharing within, a, within within every one of us. And then again, you know, moving on to Indonesia, they are really catching up. I see the ecosystem has changed. The government is more friendly. They look at the technology a lot different from what what I know two to three years ago. So I hope that talent from Web two can move to Web three, and there will be a lot new new blood and new things you can see. So the path to uh, crypto in Southeast Asia, um, I cover up some of the numbers because some of them doesn't look too good, you know. But if you look at the awareness level, Singapore is fifty percent, Philippines fifty three. You know, I think these are all very, very humble numbers. You know, when we do good things with crypto, Bitcoin go up, everyone clap. You know, you're part of the awareness. When FTX crash everyone also know about it right so awareness level i think this is a very very okay number you know we need to back up of course then if you look at the the age group awareness level is also that right so 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 i want to change this huh? you know now now if you look at the table 18 to 24 only 48 percent but 45 and above is more than 47%, which is the biggest, you know, and I belong to that group. Huh? So, so the reason why I think this is actually very promising is because many of our friends right now, they are actually looking at cryptocurrency, not just a cryptocurrency scam. You know, they know about it, you know, they, 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 they want to know more about it, you know, and they might buy it one day. So if you look at the, 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 the partner advocacy, 18 year old, 5%. But the 45 years old like me, scared, you know, very worried. So it's only 1%, you know. So I hope to see the change, you know, because we, we can afford to lose a little bit of money, right? But I'm not asking you to lose money or, or, or gain more money. It's a, it's a form, it's an exposure. You know, how is the new money going to look like? You know, how do you manage to just get a few thousand dollars out from a, a token? And then how how do you convert your your money into cryptocurrency? So the, the whole process, if you're willing to come up with a hundred dollars, you can try and experience it. Again, you know, I'm not advocating you to gamble, but it's a trying the technology and try how new money smells like and looks and, and how, how it looks like yeah so for those who buy crypto who become uh, advocates so if you look at the chart again it's uh, reflect um, okay not bad you know but again i really hope to see more people you know in singapore you know in other places just take a small step you know do your own research yeah? don't listen to your friends you know, the friends always ask you to buy those things you don't buy, okay? Never buy those because it could be a multi-level marketing scheme, right? They ask you to buy, then they can exit faster, you know, or they get 10 people, then they can, you know, they can get a good discount. All these things are not cryptocurrency, okay? So do not do that. So just do your own research. Everything's online. You can learn everything online. There's no need to ask, ask me or call your friends. No need to do that, all right? tips on uh, navigating regulation. So I, I do a, a fair bit of uh, regulation work, you know, for different government, uh, right now also for, for Bybit. So the focus has changed, 
you know, changed a lot uh, since 2018. You know, when I first started in 2018, when I tell people about crypto, the minister at the back would say, what, wow, a scam. Say, yeah, possibly. But then you, when you talk to them about blockchain technology, oh, they say, oh, this is good, this is good, you know. But, but right now, things have changed. You know, they do not see crypto as a as a scam or, or just, just say that it's not something that, that they do not want, but they are learning, you know, from a government standpoint, from a regulatory standpoint, they, they are learning. So what what, what what do companies need to need to do? So my, my, my very humble advice is uh, disrupt or be disrupted. You know, because what we are doing right now is fairly future work. You know, I want to also let everyone know what is cryptocurrency. You know how how the regulations are and how to ensure that you are crypto compatible. So just a walkthrough of uh, cryptocurrency regulations around the world. Singapore, not legal tender. You know we have a very friendly uh, payment services act. You know, um, so most of you would uh, would have already seen this. In Singapore, not a legal tender. South Korea, not legal tender. Uh, in fact, uh, the FSC is super strict. You know, they do not allow uh, banking transactions. Uh, they do not allow, allow advertisement. They, they are very, very strict. But, but bear in mind, South Korea has one of the highest trading volumes in the whole world. One of the highest. China, not legal tender. Cryptocurrency exchanges are illegal. So people like uh, ourselves, you know, from Bybit, we are not in China. You know, we, we try to stay away and make sure that we stay away, you know. And China is very much into the digital currency. So they have their own uh, e uh, RMB digital currency. UK, not legal tender for cryptocurrency. Exchanges is legal. All you need to do is to make sure that you register with the FCA and make sure that you comply to all the AML uh, CFT regulations. Switzerland legal for uh, crypto, legal for cryptocurrency exchanges. Um, just follow what FEMA tells you, you should be very safe. Which countries are considered as uh, crypto friendly. So this, these are to me, uh, in my humble opinion, are more crypto friendly. It's supposed to be only 10, you know, but because recently Hong Kong is very, very uh, vibrant, so I added Hong Kong in. Um, but if you look at the list, you know, places that I'm, I'm always there, or sometimes I'm there, most of my time are there, are all there. You know, so Switzerland, Hong Kong, Dubai, Japan, Singapore, these are, these are good places. You know, you can have different businesses there. Regulators are friendly, you know. Singapore, you want to meet the regulators, they will come and meet you, regardless who you are, you know. They are all very friendly, you know. Um, the rest are Cayman Islands and so forth. These are all, well, traditional. They are also, traditionally, they are also very, very friendly, right? Let's not uh, go in there, yeah. <laughs> then the overview, I think this is a very good, um, very good source. I, I got this from PwC. All right. If you want this document, I can send it to you. Um, you can know exactly what kind of framework is okay, what you can do in a different country, Germany, what you cannot do, France, what you cannot do. This is the best document, you know, PwC's. So give you a very good overview all the way globally, you know, Saudi Arabia, everything, all that. And they are very clear. You know, so for myself, when I give advice to different government or different uh, big companies in, in, in the Web3 space, I tend to use this as a reference. So this would be something a bit more boring, but, but it's very useful. You know, some of you might be already talking to some uh, kick-ass consultant, say, oh, let's uh, start a crypto project, you know. And then you, know, you, you turn around when you look at the lawyer, lawyer say, hey, this is a security. Or oh, this thing you can't do it. You know, let's not do it. So, so my, my version of a modern day uh, how we test whether this project itself, whether is it going to be a security or not, is slightly different. 
you know, I don't know how much time I have, but you know, there are four criteria that you will I see. So this thing, very simple. If you Google my name, modern day version of how it has, uh, it gives you a very good, give you some good articles that I've written how we should look at how we test for crypto pro, uh, projects, how you should uh, position your company not to get into all these uh, security issues. You know, again, Google my name, 100% there. Oh, very nice. Uh, this is uh, I wrote this in uh, Bel Bel Belzinger, you know, and uh, many other uh, different uh, media outlets. You can definitely find my my writings. Um, so okay. Since I have five minutes, I'm going to very fast Singapore speed, and then then we can end the conversation. So so just a just a very quick thing is uh, Web three decentralized. Uh, based on uh, the some of my practitioner friends, we did a polling. Answer is no. Fifty nine percent say is no, which is very very right, very true. Because Web three actually is owned by people like myself and some of these VCs. They 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 own it. You know, it's owned by sing, singular. Uh, entities and, and because of incentive it will ultimately be a centralized entity with a different label and this is said by Jack Dorsey former CEO of uh, Twitter he's a billionaire uh, I'm not a billionaire but I'm going to say this Web3 is the first generation of a decentralized web but Web4 I really look at it as a super more decentralized uh, version of Web3 you know things are more adapt adaptive Things are more decentralized. Things can be controlled by AI. So Web four is a new way to redefine decentralization. It's a it's a, it's a real new way to redecentralize. Because if you talk to my friends, some of them they say, ah, I don't want the government. Uh, I don't want the bank. You know, they they think that that is decentralization. But I think that is not really the true meaning of decentralization. So we need to redecentralize to find a better value you know because banks government and crypto companies should all work together the advantages i don't want to say anymore because i have five minutes but trust me to be very honest I, I'm, I'm not the only guy who thinks that this is not decentralized okay i'm not the only creative guy so that jack dorsey mentioned about web5 so he's one 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 level above me right uh, our friend uh, from uh, Tron got Web6, right? But as you know, you know if you look at the BMW thing, right? You always got to go number, right? So we should go with four first, you know. And uh, last few slides, you know, and then we did, we did a, uh, we did uh, another survey, you know. Eighty-two percent of people say that we need Web4. This is actually after the my 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 presentation in Dubai, we did a poll, so they felt that. You know we need to be more decentralized people on the ground felt that it should be more decentralized and uh bless very nicely and most of them they are also some of them are not crypto people after hearing my my speech they think that it's really not decentralized and they think that if we want to run a decentralized business we should really keep our narrative correct so therefore it's a chance for us to redefine decentralization we are still very early, super early right now. Mm, I think so, super, super early. So believe me, every one of you who didn't put up the hand just now, is fine. 100% okay, because we are very early. And this is one of my tagline in my book, you know, your new asset is in the digital world. Of course, you still have to keep some money under the bed, you know, sometimes just in case. But digital asset, there are new, new places where you can get more knowledge, you know, and find new ways to get to get your new money. Uh, with that, uh, this is my name, my Twitter account, my website. Uh, again, I always say this: uh, being a Singaporean and with that kind of name, very easy searchable, cannot do bad things. So, please, uh, you know, if you have anything, let me know. Really happy to see all of you. Thank you. Thank you. So, my mom is uh, run, walking up. I really hope.